What's up everybody? It's Justin at SK Greenhouse and today I'm going to be showing you exactly how to plant in clay and compacted soils. Let's jump in. Maybe you've been watching some gardening shows, I don't know, like Garden Answer where they can just stick their spade into the ground, pop out a big old pile of black gold. But here in the south, we have to take a different approach. Even though clay gets a bad rap, it's actually not all that bad. It's full of nutrients like potassium, calcium, and even magnesium. And once your plants get established in it, it actually provides a wonderful foundation because your roots can really anchor down into that clay. And if you have something like a strong windstorm, your trees are not going to blow over. This will also help protect the roots and help your plants thrive in extreme temperature changes or moisture changes. And plants in sandy soil just simply cannot. Clay soil has a low permeability, which means it actually holds a lot of water. That's why you see plants in the south with no irrigation on them. And here we are about a minute later, and you can see that water that I've just put in has still not drained out. The problem with poor draining soil is that if I plant most evergreens or woody ornamentals into it without any amendment, again, it's been about five minutes now, this clay still hasn't drained the water, it's going to set up root rot and other plant diseases because the root ball is just going to be staying saturated, especially if you have periods of rainfall. This is not a good situation. Today we're in my conifer garden and I've selected this Confucius Hinoki Cypress to be planted amongst this blue Domingo Pine and the green Thunderhead I have on my left. I think the gold's going to contrast really well. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of these pine needles out of the way. The problem with compacted soils is you can't use a regular old spade to dig into it. It's going to take a couple tools that are, I think, critical to the operation. And we're going to talk about those next. The first tool I want to talk about is the pickaxe. This is the pick end of a pickaxe. This is what we're going to do to slam down into the ground to break up that clay. A lot of people want to dig with the axe in, but this is just to excavate rock and roots and if i have any of those during this excavation i'll show you how to use it the other tool i want to talk about is the trenching shovel and this has a lot less surface area than a typical spade so once i get the ground broken up with the pickaxe i can finish the excavation with the trenching shovel very easily and as a quick side note about these tools i like to invest in ones with fiberglass handles i just bought these brand new these will last so much longer than wood handles and they're a lot lighter. This is made by Trooper. If you're buying a pickaxe online, sometimes the head doesn't come pre-installed on the handle. I like this brand because they went ahead and did that. Makes me feel a whole lot less nervous about using it. And this is a trenching shovel made by V Nimtai. It just had really good reviews. It's nice and light. And I think it'll be excellent for getting this job done. Here in Shelby, North Carolina, zone 7B, we have not had a drop of rain in literally two months. And I'm not joking, we are in an extreme drought. So this is gonna put these tools to the test, whether they can get this job done. But first, let's talk about the soil amendments we're gonna wanna use. Avoid anything called potting mix or potting soil. Again, this is going to hold a little bit too much water, uh, largely due to the peat moss content in it. Peat moss can hold up to 20 times its weight in water. So although this can be great for planting annuals and some perennials, it could still rot your woody ornamentals and evergreens. Instead, I have found soil conditioner to be the best product on the market. Soil conditioner is basically ground up pine bark fines. It's been aged a little bit, so it's kind of like compost but it's very, very chunky and it provides great drainage for your woody and ornamentals and shrubs. If you wanna come in and look at this, you can see how it's very barky. It almost looks like soil, but it's super chunky. So this is gonna be great for providing drainage. I know many of you are gonna ask about using compost and a lot of times this is appropriate to use as well. Just make sure it's not holding a ton of water, a chunkier compost is gonna be your best bet. So this plant over here came out of a six gallon container and I'm gonna plant it right here and I'm gonna dig the hole about one and a half to two times wider than the root ball. Now I don't wanna dig a deep hole because we could get the bathtub effect where you've got this big hole that's deep 
you put your plant in that and then when water gets filled up in it your root ball just sits in that water so we want to focus on more of a wide hole that way the water has somewhere to disperse and whoo this is going to be tough now as i'm hitting this with the pickaxe i'm trying to slam the pick into the ground and then when i pull back on it it helps break up the the clay i'm definitely hitting some roots i have a pretty large pine tree to my right and yes those roots have made their way all the way over here so you may get to see me use the axe end of this pickaxe Now I'm going to take this trench and shovel, try to break up some of these clods to make it easier when we go to backfill. And then I'm just going to start excavating the clay off to the side. And I'm going to make a nice little ring around the hole. And I'll show you why we're doing that in just a second. It's like the middle of November. It's gonna be 83 today. Kind of humid. <laughs> Had to take that sweatshirt off. This is, you know, this is not easy. All right, we've broken up the soil with the pickaxe, got most of the loose soil excavated. I think this is gonna be about right for this tree. Yeah, we're looking good. We got plenty of room on all sides. Uh, the depth is a little deep, but I'm gonna put a little extra soil back in. And I'm actually gonna plant this up high with the top quarter of the root ball sticking up out of the ground. That'll help with extra drainage. Now I'm gonna take our soil conditioner. Some, some companies call this soil enhancer. It's pretty much the same thing. Every brand's got their version of it. I'm gonna just pour a nice little ring out on top of the native soil again you wouldn't want to plant just straight in this because when it got through this into the clay your plant might go into shock that's why i like to mix it up with the native soil and the soil conditioner about 50 50. and then when i start backfilling around the plant this will naturally mix together and you have a good duke's mixture i am sprinkling in some biotone you don't want to go heavy on fertilization this time of year you don't want to encourage that much top growth going in the winter time, you wanna encourage more root growth, which is mainly what this biotone is gonna do. Another good thing about at least a lot of the red clay that we have, it's naturally acidic. So acid loving plants like azaleas, rhododendrons, camellias, and most evergreens in general are gonna love the pH. I'm going to pack this down a little bit with my foot. All right, let's talk about mulching. You know, I don't care whether you use hardwood mulch, pine straw like I'm about to use right here, or even soil conditioner is good to mulch with. Another thing I failed to mention about soil conditioner, the reason I like using as much of it as possible is because it attracts earthworms. And for compacted soil, this is a beautiful thing because those earthworms will burrow down into the earth around the roots and it leaves little tunnels which is almost like natural aeration for compacted soils so i would not be afraid to mulch with soil conditioner although it's going to break down really fast um, today i'm going to be using pine needles and i'm just going to shake these out around the tree it's very easy to put out that's why i like using them over mulch especially if i don't have a whole lot to do now another thing about mulch a good tip i'll give you is you never want to mulch uh, especially with hardwood mulch or a, a wood mulch you don't want to make a big pile up around the trunk and then mound it down you see that a lot of landscapers do that or a lot of homeowners do that 
That is not the way to do it. Because if you, if you mulch around the trunk of a tree, that trunk can't get any oxygen. And you're actually gonna cause a lot of disease uh, po problems down the road. A better way to mulch is to lightly go around the base and then focus the mound out here where the roots are gonna grow. Another reason you wanna mulch is because here in the south, with our clay especially, if you're planting the conifer, it's more prone on pines and spruces. You don't want the naked soil, the native soil, to splash up on the foliage after a rain or when you're watering. This will also cause fungus and disease. That's why a lot of times you'll see conifers growing in the south with needle drop on the bottom. Sometimes that's a fungus issue from the soil. Not to mention a good thick layer of mulch will help retain moisture. Finally, we're gonna to need to water our new plant in. I just got one of these hose link systems and I absolutely love it. It keeps my garden nice and clean and neat. Highly recommend it if you're tired of dragging a hose and then trying to coil it up at the end. Um, if you want, a uh, link will be in the description for this. This is the 82 foot model. They got different sizes. Uh, put in the promo code we got for you at the bottom and you'll get a little discount if you're interested. But when it comes to watering in a new plant in this hard <laughs> clay and dry compacted soil, we definitely want to water in very thoroughly. Sometimes you can almost walk away and leave your hose running. And uh, we want to water thoroughly and deep right off the bat to get rid of all those air pockets that we probably created uh, when we backfilled. And this will get this plant off to a great healthy start. Well, there you go, folks. I hope this video helps you the next time you go to plant in clay or compacted soils. If you're new to the channel, we put out content like this all the time. So if you wanna see more, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. That way you get updated every time we release a new video. And until next time, become a plant person.